lot of exciting matches coming up. Right now we're at 174. For the Hawkeyes. Well, Kaz's uh, been out of the lineup for, uh, he had a knee surgery back quite a while ago. You can see his knees taped. That's Mark Bex for Penn State. He's from Concord, Ohio, and he's a freshman. He's going up against Gabe McMahon, a junior, from Gakona, Alaska. Now, how'd you, when you were, you were recruiting this uh, young man, get him to come down from Alaska? Pretty simple. Lenny Zaleski was his uh, high school coach at that time up in Palmer, Alaska. Former All-American for Dan, uh, Lenny Zaleski. Uh, it was uh, Gabe McMahon's high school coach. Here's a replay of the uh, first point score. High crotch, good penetration, stuck, stayed right in there, didn't let him cut the corner, came up, tripped right away to come across to get the, uh, to get the two One point takedown. Immediately escaped for Bex. Bex, of course, that's a familiar wrestling name back east. He comes from a wrestling family as he's one of two younger brothers of Charlie Bex, who finished as the 150-pound runner-up in the 96 NCAA championships for Ohio State. And um, Brett, his brother, also wrestles at Indiana. And his father, Charles, wrestled for John Carroll University in the mid-70s. So it's a wrestling family. That's Mark Bex in the Penn State uniform, a freshman. I'm not, I'm not sure how they all got at different schools, but uh, maybe they're all similar weights. I'm right, not sure. he's a spice of life action, there. Action, action, action. Checking it all out. Center. Gabe McMahon from Alaska, as we said, in the, a junior for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Gabe's coming back off a knee, a knee surgery, and I'm sure he wants to look good. First time in uh, Hawkeye uniform for a while. Been being, Center. He was replaced by uh, Scotty Kaufman. Kaufman did a good job. A couple of years ago, Gabe McMahon it, made a big splash in the Big Tens, finished Please. second as a freshman, and uh, back, gave two back. points. Oh, no, they say no points. No points. Two Out to bounce. one, scores two to one in favor of McMahon. Bex has done a real nice job for the Penn State team here. That, as we said, as a team has been struggling with a record of two and eight. Bex has a 17 and nine record and uh, off to a great start as a freshman for the Nittany Lions. He's going up against uh, McMahon who has a nine and four record and as Dan said, is coming back from an injury. He's been out of the lineup for a while. Another high crotch, needs to finish here. He's uh, cut the corner well, went one way and cut the corner the other way to get the takedown. He needs to ride him out this period if he wants to uh, build up a little riding time and gain a little momentum going into that uh, second period. He's got to believe an arm bar and uh, go looking for a near wrist. Well, that takedown came with uh, 20 seconds left in the period. And there's uh, seven seconds left for McMahon to ride He's and keep the position. He does, and that uh, brings the end of the first period. The score is four to one in favor of Gabe McMahon. We asked uh, Jim Zaleski about his impression of the Penn State team. Penn State's not having you know, a great year by Penn State standards. They're kind of young, rebuilding, but they do still got some very good individuals, so you gotta be ready to wrestle those individuals. And uh, hopefully I think our team's ready to do that. The individuals you're looking at right now, Mark Andy. Bex, Penn State, Gabe McMahon, Iowa. The score is five to one. Now that was an escape for Gabe McMahon real early in the second period, and the score is five to one in favor of McMahon from Iowa over Bex from Penn State. Three to three. The score is uh, team-wise. Each team getting a regular decision from the first two matches. I don't think Iowa was planning on losing that uh, 165 pound match, and. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, we're probably a little disappointed there, and yeah, I'm mate. sure the coaches uh, Center, guys. were not so much Rush. disappointed in the loss, just maybe how the loss time. happened. The Penn State just here. seemed to uh, come on strong, take it, uh, take it to the Hawkeye there during that match. Well, and I'll tell you what it did. I mean, you've got a nice crowd here tonight, and if uh, Penn State's going to have any kind of chance in these matches, you've got to take the crowd out of it, and um, the crowd's kind of quiet, Dan. Yeah, the crowd needed to probably get into it a little bit uh, to help Anderson, but more than that, Anderson needed to help himself. 
Oh, well, we uh, remind you to see that you will see more wrestling excitement next Friday night at 9 p.m. for Oklahoma State at Iowa. This broadcast will also be webcast on IPTV's college wrestling website. Web users will be able to watch or listen to the event from their computer. Check out our website for more webcast information and up-to-date wrestling information at www.collegewrestling.iptv.org. You said that's Oklahoma State? I got to be neutral there? <laughs> as neutral as you can be, Dan. And we've got a feisty uh, Penn State wrestler here in Mark Bex who's down five to one, but uh, not down in attitude as he comes back at Gabe McMahon who has two takedowns and escaped to build that five to one lead. 50 seconds left in the second period. That, uh, that match is gonna be shown down in Oklahoma? Possibility to webcast? Oh, it's all over the world. All over the world, Dan. Well, I'm not worried about the world. <laughs> well, I, th I think that means Oklahoma too. Oh. And so... Well, then I'll try to do a good job. The man's, for not being in the lineup, Seems to be uh, holding up pretty well. Yeah, you don't see a, it doesn't seem like a shape problem. He's uh, he's attacking, he's going after Mark Bex, and uh, I think that he is uh, making a good uh, re-entry into the lineup. There you see it, the score's three to three, Penn State, Iowa. We're in the third match, there's 174 between Gabe McMahon from Iowa and Mark Bex from Penn State. I'm Tim Johnson, along with Dan Gable and Jim Gibbons. He reached, he shot well, instead of continuing to penetrate, he stopped and tried to reach with his arms and pull in. You've got to continue with your hips and cut the corners and lift. That cost him there. That's the end of the uh, second period. The score's five to one. Jim Gibbons, what do you think? Reds down. Well, Tim, I'm impressed too with uh, Gabe McMahon's shape here coming off of that layoff here. At, at, uh, you have to admit he's probably had probably about 15 to 20 different uh, takedown attempts here during the course of the match. And, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty impressive really after the... Uh, uh, loss. I mean, after being at the, with the layoff there, and sometimes that's the toughest thing is just to get that competition shape back. I think you're right, Jim, and this really doesn't hurt uh, Gabe McMahon at all to have this break because of blood from Penn State. But uh, like you said, he hasn't shown any signs of tiring. And we're going to start the third period now. The score five to one in favor of McMahon over Bex, and McMahon will be on top with a five-one lead. He's getting right in time. He would be nice for him to build up a one-point time advantage writing, but at the, at the same time, I feel like uh, this is one of his areas that he hasn't probably put on the scoreboard a lot, and so we'll see what happens here and see if he tries to uh, build up that uh, lead. He's doing a good job knocking him off his base, and he's starting to get up there, almost to 50 seconds, so, you know, maybe he's starting to think a little bit more about uh, some of these tough matches and how you win them. Well, and that's a good uh, point that you bring up. Uh, uh, the first match between uh, um, Williams and Walker. Uh, down the road, you got to keep that intensity. And then this last match uh, between um, um, Penn State's um, wrestler who did such a good job. Whoa, there's McMahon holding on. He got the two, but he was over the arm. He needed to stay under their arm there and he reached across the body and the game took about extra five seconds there to get around there he needed to keep the weight on the near side more but uh, he ended up doing a good job because he hooked the leg well what mcmahon has done is he's gained riding time he has a minute 14 uh riding time so there's a point he's let, had two escapes now gained a takedown and looking for another score is seven to three in favor of mcmahon from iowa stay in there stay 45 in there. seconds left in the match he's uh, attempting to do uh fireman's carries but not penetrating, not getting through the arms to the legs. Got to get more penetration, more control of that arm. There's a good shot. And he's, to, he's pulling it again, though. But he came up with it. Uh, he's got his head to the outside. He stepped over real quick, did a good job. Uh, and he's going to get a takedown there, I believe. I think he's going to get a takedown. They haven't That's given it yet, but there's two. Two, two points, yeah. 20 seconds left in the match. The score's 9-3. to three. He's actually was out of position. He's going to try to go for a quick... And he knows where he yeah. is in the match. That's important. He Very goes takedown would uh, give him a team point. Has nothing to lose here. There's... He's going to have to break it in the referee, I believe. I think he's going to break it, yeah. yeah it looks like he's going to have a difficult time getting that extra. Again, though, when he shot, he, hold, he held on a little bit instead of continuing to penetrate, and that's what gave the Penn State wrestler an advantage position there of, of being able to use his uh, uh, trick knee. 
And there's the end of the match. The score is 9-4 to four in favor of the Hawkeye. Gabe McMahon 10-4 to four with riding time. That makes the score 6 for Iowa, 3 for Penn State. There's the winner, Gabe McMahon. And this uh, by the score of 10-4. to four and makes the team score Iowa 6, Penn State 3, as we go into 184 pounds between Paul Jen